Good morning, everyone. All of us, all of a sudden, got quiet in here. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome to the well today. Um, you all are brave to come out on such a cold morning. Oh, it's not that cold. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not if you live in Canada, it's not that cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Kansas City, out where Mark was this morning, it was minus 11. So I thought, ooh, that's really cold. So we even told the greeters this morning, um, try not to be too friendly in the doorway. <laughs> Bring them on in and shut the door. <laughs> ah, welcome, everybody online. Thank you for joining us today. Ah, how many of you have had a good time pressing into the Lord this month? Fasting and praying. What I heard the Lord say this morning is that the disciplines that are you that you were implementing right now in your life, you may not see the results right now, but the Lord said what you are doing is putting traction to the things that you have always wanted to step into. So He said, "Don't stop." Just don't stop. So, you know, denying yourself food, I think we could all do that for quite a bit of time. It would be all right. But I'm, there's something that happens. The Lord fine-tunes our spirits, doesn't he? It's like we're the ones who change, and a lot of times it starts on the inside. And the side benefit is maybe you'll lose a few pounds, but... But the point is, and the thing that we're going after is to fine tune our spirits <sighs> to feel, to sense, to see, to hear more clearly. And y'all, and to walk into an amazing place of peace in the process. So we're gonna worship this morning. I'm excited to see what God's going to do in our midst today as we press in, continually press in to Him and worship. Thank you, Lord. Well, angels, we welcome you in this house. <laughs> All the ministering spirits, the ancients, the cloud of witnesses. Holy Spirit, you know you have full reign. So we just say, come on. Spirit, lead us this morning in worship.
Lord, unveil our eyes to see it. Lord, unveil our eyes to perceive it. Lord, help us to receive it. Show us your glory. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us. Show us your power, Lord. Show us your power, Lord. Show us your power, Lord. Show us, show us, Lord. Let this be a day of great revealing. Let it be a day of great revealing. Raising up sons and daughters that are warriors in this day. There'll be ones that don't faint. They will run and not faint. They will not shrink back. They will not shrink back. Lord, we receive your fresh fire in the house today. Receive your fresh fire. 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 We've waited for this day. Gathered in your name, we're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire. We'll burn our hearts with truth. So just Welcome up a place in your spirit right now, Lord. I welcome, I welcome, I welcome it. Lord, will you burn away anything that's dross, anything that's standing in your way, Lord. We release it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we receive our redesign, the reset that you promised for this year. Lord, we receive it. It's not New Year's resolutions, church. It's the desire of your heart meeting yeah. the desire of your Father in heaven. So, Lord, we release, we release anything that, that hinders us. Your word even says, cast it off. So, Lord, we cast off every hindrance, yeah. everything that's, yes, that's in our way. In Jesus' name. opened up the heavens so we can see you you've opened up the floodgates yes, a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our praise opened up you've opened up the heavens so we can see you you've opened up the floodgates a mighty river For this day, we've gathered in your name, calling out to you. Come on, your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're seen. So we can see you. You've opened up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. You've opened up. Sing it again. Do that chorus. Come on. You've opened up the heavens. So we can see you. You've opened up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. 
place, your glory on our face. We're looking to you, Lord. Surrounding like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. You've opened up the heavens so we can see. You've opened up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Part of our praise, you've opened up. Woo! You've opened up the heavens so we can see. You've opened up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us. Show us your glory, Lord. Come on, do that one more time. Show us, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. You've opened up the heavens. So we can see you You've opened up the floodgates A mighty river flowing from your heart Filling every part of our praise You've opened up the heavens So we can see you You've opened up the floodgates A mighty river flowing from your heart Come on, church. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Just release what's in your heart. So, Lord, this morning we speak to our own gates, and we just say, open up, open up, you eternal portals, 
you eternal gateways, you ancient gateways, we speak to you this morning. And we say, fling wide, you gates, that the King of glory may come in. Come through us. Yeah. Ah, oh, King of glory, you're so welcome in this place. It delights our hearts to host you. It is a holy thing to host the presence of our King. So beautiful, King of Glory. You are so beautiful, and so beautiful. Wow, my soul, my soul, my sing. My soul, my soul, my sing. My soul, my soul, my sing. You're the beautiful. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. You're the beautiful one, wonderful. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross is spoken mercy over me no eye has seen no ear has heard no heart can fully know how glorious how beautiful you So 
some things off of folks this morning even online Woo, no January blues mm -mm. that's not our Lord's spirit on you if you're sensing it if you're under the spirit of the Lord is joy and strength courage power and might whoa yeah wow Lord should just begin, begin to breathe in it's yours. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. There's just nothing as beautiful and lovely as your presence. We worship you. We worship you. Yeah. Hey. 
things are new Here in your presence Everything bows before you Here in your presence Found in your hands Fullness of joy Every fear suddenly wiped away. Yeah, here in your presence, all of my games now fade away. Every crown no longer on display. Here in your presence Ooh, yeah. Heaven is trembling in all of your wonders The kings and the kingdoms are standing on there's something in your body or on your body that is in pain there's some sickness lay your hand on it right now he says I'm into I want to make everything new so we're going to be the point of contact of Holy Spirit by placing your hand on it we speak life we speak life, we speak life. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Everything new. We 
we speak the life of Jesus into every bone into every tendon into our blood we speak the life of Jesus 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 your life through every cell of our body online put your hand on whatever it is that's hurting and receive the life of Jesus flow through your body right now yeah yeah the Lord's making everything new this morning yeah Ooh. he's turning things around Y'all, he's really pleased with our act of faith to step into this. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, let's just wait there just a minute. <laughs> he's doing a little bit of triage this morning. <laughs> yeah. We're in the Holy Ghost Hospital. <laughs> Woo, we're no longer in the waiting room. We're being attended to by the great physician. When we're in the triage room, it's an order of importance of what's taken care of. And the Lord says, everything is important to me. No matter how trivial it may seem to you or something you may be accustomed to or you even, have even spoken, this happens all the time. I'm used to this. This happens when I do this. The Lord is concerned about every single thing. Nothing's trivial to him. Everything. Stay right there. In fact, some of you are already seeing Jesus' face attending to you. Just look into his face. Of your faith, 
just increasing our intimacy with him even this morning wow FaceTime with you Lord oh there's nothing more beautiful nothing more stunning more transforming than we are face to face I was the greatest lover of all Lord you're teaching us how Stay aware. Sometimes we see you, sometimes we don't. But our awareness of your face. Oh, it's so beautiful. as we prepare our hearts this morning for communion and as we make our way to the communion stations just keep his face right here before you <laughs> oh he looks so good on you church you sparkle with his presence And so as you take the elements, just hold them and we will pray over them together.
So what would you say to the greatest lover that you're face to face with? I don't know about you, but I would say I love you. And I just feel like it's okay to go ahead and express that, your heart, to the lover of your soul. I love you, Jesus. I love you so much. You know, something that I learned yesterday about the Lord's Supper, Jesus said to his disciples, I will not take this meal with you again until I come into my kingdom. And where is his kingdom? In us. So Lord, we are honored and grateful to fulfill those words that you spoke to us 2,000 years ago that you will come into us because we are your kingdom. So Lord, we are thrilled and happy to fulfill that with you. So today, Lord, we take this bread and we say yes and amen to your kingdom being fulfilled in us. Take and eat. And you know, all the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. So all the fullness of the Godhead is in us when we've accepted him as our Savior and our Lord. So we accept what your blood means. We remember what that means, Lord, for us. The fullness of the Godhead. In Jesus' name, take and drink. It's a very tender place that the Lord has us in right now, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Those who are married, who have been married, know what FaceTime, how transforming it is. It's like when you're face to face with your spouse. You don't even have to have words. It's so intimate and so disarming and so all-encompassing just to be face to face. Wow. This felt like the Lord said, I want you to practice this more. I know they say a lot of people teach you can't see God and live. You can't see until you die. But I'm telling you, we can see God. We can see Jesus. We can see Holy Spirit. We can see anything in the spirit realm because we're spirit beings. We're spirit beings in flesh. We're more spirit than flesh. And the Lord is increasing our awareness to not only who we are, but who he is. And that FaceTime is transforming us.
It's like in that place of intimacy, that's where my heart becomes his work of art. I'm changed. And I can see it in you too. You all are changing so beautifully. Right, Karen? <laughs> Team, thank you so much. Beautifully done. Ah. Sometimes it's just nice to come in out of the chaos, isn't it? Take a breath. Just breathe. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I think we'll do offering after. Yes. <laughs> Ezra, would you mind bringing the table over? Yes, Lord, I'm listening. He calls. Thank you, Lord. Uh, new season, huh? Definitely something different. The well's always good for different. You guys are explorers, you're giants of the faith. If you're new in the house, uh, just hang on for the ride. Uh, we always use this imagery like we're rowing the boat with Jesus and he's taking us on an adventure. So even though there's songs prepared and maybe a message, if the Lord lets us get there, we're always watching what the Lord wants to navigate in the atmosphere of his presence. And even online, people tune in, so we bless you. Uh, we're very much aware that we have family across the city and around the region. Some people are a little nervous about the weather. Hey, it's not too cold. Let me just say it's not cold at all. If you're in Minnesota up there, you know, this is warm. My mom just said in St. Louis it was minus 4, Kansas City's minus 10. So I know we're going to get down to single digits. So I expected everybody to be here this morning, but I know it's cold for Nashville. The south, we feel it different. Even my northern bones feel different after living here for over 30 years. So it changes. But anyway, whether you're in the house or you're watching or even watch this later, God transcends time. So if you're tuning in or you're a, you're a family member, you're a well-ite, you're a well person, or you're a guest, or you love to tune in, we have people that watch from all around the world, really. Um, hundreds of people every week. I was just looking at our YouTube stats, like 6,000 views a month. I'm like, Wow, Lord, I was surprised because uh, I try not to pay attention. It doesn't matter if it's 5 or 10 or 15 or 5,000 or 20,000 or a million. If one person has an encounter with Jesus, that's worth it. So we, we don't concern ourselves with numbers, but it's interesting to watch and you just go, Lord, that's amazing. Do what you want to do, and he does. And our call has never changed. The DNA of the well when we started as a home group, and here we are in 2024, I was asking the Lord during this prayer and fasting, he says, it's still to host my presence, Carl. Because I kept thinking, oh, there's a divine reset and a retooling for the well. And I'm like, okay, Lord, yeah. He goes, no, I still want you to host my presence and let me navigate my sons and daughters the way I want to, not what you think will work, or a program. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. We bless all of the church. All of the body has a purpose. For those of you that are in the house, you know this. You go like, Carl, I know that. But you wouldn't believe how many new people watch and go, what are they doing? What is that thing you started? That wasn't on the song list. And I started in, the Lord said, don't sing the song. Declare this. 
and prophesy this or exhort prophecy does encouragement and you feel built up it's not the old prophetic old testament stuff where you're like you're you know this condemnation's coming and yes prophecy can have correction in it but in the new covenant it's that you should feel like whoa like your spirit man expanded so if you're a prophet which who's got jesus if you're in jesus you're a apostle prophet evangelist pastor and teacher might be the little letters. I, I'm into honoring position, and we appreciate that you honor what we do as Leanne and I as pastors and then our leadership team, but we don't have a staff. It's us and Jesus and then our overseers with ACT. Jerry is one of those, so if you have a problem, go see Jerry Bryant. <laughs> Jerry's like, can I hide a little bit? No, the idea is like the, the divine reset is a... Is a uh, it's a coming up. It's like, oh, it's more, it's bigger than where we've been. That's what I feel. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So you get in this mode like, Lord, what is it? And Leanne's writing a song called FaceTime. I'm like, Leanne, you can't write a song called FaceTime. That, that's kind of social media. And I, she's out of control. I can't tell her what to do. But the Lord's like, I want to use the language of the day. So if God wants he wants to get right there. And you may feel like, I can't see God and live. People have that mind in, in the church. That's old covenant. You can see God. God may appear to you. Jesus may appear to you. And there's a lot of the church that feels like, no, that can't be. That's a different Jesus. No, it's not. If Jesus is claiming Jesus and he's glorifying Yahweh, the Father, and bringing the Holy Spirit, it's not another Jesus. Now, are there, I won't go into like, you know, cult stuff and all that. But anyway, you can see the Lord. The Spirit can reveal things to you. You can be like the Apostle John in Revelation, you know, or even earlier, like I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, right? And I, we always thought in Bible class, like, that's so cool. You know, John was a favorite, so that was John's deal. Or Paul, like, I knew a man that used to go up into the heavens or a third heaven. He was speaking in second person of himself. So amazing, these amazing things. I just can't describe it. And But he didn't want us to get hung up on it, but he was doing it. I believe, well, Jesus knocked him off the horse, right? Even as a rebellious or as a religious guy, that's how he got saved. Jesus appeared to him in this ball of light. So anyway, we're about FaceTime, and there's something's getting closer. Please be praying and fasting as the Lord directs this month. Here we are, what, 14 days in. Um, there are always going to be seasons to pray and fast, but I implore you, don't let up. Like, and there'll be a lot of things to interfere. Life will interfere. Carve out time for the Lord more. Even if it's little pieces, you don't have to go pray for two hours or uh, whatever the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will direct. That's why we haven't mandated, hey, we're all going to meet here on, at lunchtime and you all better show up. We don't do that unless Jesus would have us do it. But be pressing in and asking the Lord for the more, the things that are coming. And I just had, this is another one of those sermons. Uh, everybody, I mean, what I'm getting, what we're getting right now is everybody's hanging with the Lord and we're getting letters like, hey, I got this idea. I want to bring a sermon. Some of you might be bringing a sermon. And just hold, just hang on, chew on it. Uh, brew on what the words would be, like messages, you know, and, and really refine it. Stand in front of a mirror or preach it to yourself because I may tell you like, okay, February, you bring that word, several of you. Or you're, at, you're getting ideas like, hey, maybe the well should do this. And I'm like, great idea. And I'm like, Lord, this is awesome, all these great ideas. And the Lord said, hold, hold. Well, we're all excited and we're pressing in. We're getting closer, but get the ideas. Don't feel like, well, you know, I told Carl and Leanne to do this and they didn't do it. Well, don't get mad. Just trust that the Holy Spirit's going to tell us what to take. And I would say this, if the Lord, you, I'm believing you're getting stuff. That's what we want. You as sons and daughters should be getting divine downloads and things. There's going to be what? The pillars of the well are the four things. What? Worship, word, prayer, and action. You're going to find things I believe the Lord's going to download that we don't do in the house, but you do them. <laughs> 
But I need you guys to give me a platform. No, we don't. Jesus is your platform. Um, you may, but it may be. And then I'll pull on you like, well, I've never taught before. That's okay. We're just going to throw you overboard and make you swim, you know? So be, be brewing on everything the Holy Spirit is downloading, but don't, f don't freak out if it doesn't land where you think it's going to land. That's what I'll say, okay? But don't stop pressing in, and you don't have to, like, stop sending us emails. And sometimes we go, like, I don't know what to do with all this. Just in two weeks, we've gotten a lot of, like, hey, I saw the Lord, and he said this, and what about this, and what if we do that? And I'm like, awesome, all these awesome things, and the Lord's like, Hold, hold, yes, Lord. So that's where we're at, and I'm in, we're encouraged by it, and we're just doing what you're doing. We're fasting and praying, and and it's different every day, you know, and it's good. The Lord's been doing some. I'm journaling. Thank you, Ken and Connie, that got me this journal. Guess what? I don't journal well, and I'm journaling. I'm having dreams. You wouldn't want to read it, but I am going to read you a little thing. I've never read my journal. Leanne's never heard any of my journals, right? So this is brave. I'm going to, it's not deep, dark secrets, by the way, but I'm starting to trust the, the, the rabbis and even in Orthodox uh, Judaism, they talk about the watches of the night and the Holy Spirit, the Lord speaks many times in the night hours. So be attentive, like keep something by your bed. Uh, what I've had to do is my dreamer kind of is, is kind of quick and then it goes away. And if I don't roll over and go, let me see, the dog was eating my pizza and da da da, whatever, whatever the dream is. And sometimes I just do quick notes and it comes. But the journal right now is like I was asking the Lord in my fasting time and the Lord's even having me do weird things in my fasting time. He said, Carl, the other day, I'm like, I'm sitting at the desk, and the Bible's open, and my journal's open. Okay, I'm ready, Lord. Ah, vision, good. take me, Lord. Great, Lord, I'll go. Let's trans I'll go over to Israel and fight the enemies. Or, you know, take me into the cosmos. The Lord said, go lay down. That's not what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, really? No, and I could picture myself going into our spare bedroom, and it's kind of a mess because I've messed it up. And, and uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Sorry, Leanne, you know. We, yeah, we have our bedroom, but sometimes I'll get something, and I wake up in the night, and then I just go in that other room to sleep and wait on the Lord and think, Lord, I'm preparing myself to hear something. Land's even like, why are you going into the other room so much? You know, I said, I love you, honey. There's nothing wrong. I'm trying to do different things to my flesh to go. So anyway, I was sitting in the office doing that, and the Lord, go bury. I could see myself plunging into that bed and getting in the pillows and getting in the covers. And I was in my clothes, and the Lord said, just plunge in. And he, when I did that, I was plunging into the Lord. So it was a prophetic act, and what it did was, like, I knew right away I was coming under the, the feathers of Papa, right? That mother hen thing that Papa wanted to do. I was like, oh, felt so good. I almost, I opened my eyes like, am I in, I'm in God. I know <laughs> I am in you, you are in me, so, but was my flesh going to see something? And no, I was just in the dark in that room, and I rested, and I think the Lord's like, you, relax. Ah, thank you, Lord. Carl, you ever need to hear, just relax. Yeah, we were trying so hard. And um, so I had a few things that came in that time with the Lord. And uh, yeah, one of the things, a uh, note here is I said, put on, the Lord told me, put on my strength. Put it on. I'm in the Lord. Ooh, I felt kind of built up. Literally, like, the Lord says, put me on more. Well, Lord, you're in me. No, put on my strength. So I did that. And in my might, the power of my might, I mean, you can hear that scripture coming to life. And I said, cool, Lord, yes, help me do this more. So I got up and journaled. Then I, I'm in the, in the resting place with the Lord. And the last thing that came was this. <laughs> 
I said, but Lord, I want to do great things, greater things, right? You ever feel, I want to do it. I want to do all that, I, you know, the mystical stuff and the cosmos and signs and wonders and the well needs signs, wonders, and miracles. I want to see more people saved, healed, and delivered. I just, I mean, I love the fact that we get to hang out here and get encouraged. The body comes together for encouragement, but I'm not doing it even out there as much as I want to. I'll just confess. I'm like, Lord, sometimes I'm afraid. Like, do I, do I pray for this person or am I just being religious? You know, and I'm trying more and more. Well, I'll risk it. Or I pass by somebody. I'm like, I'm going to just overshadow whatever, what I sense in the spirit. So, so I'm asking the Lord that. The cosmos, signs and wonders, take me, Lord, wherever you want. Like I said earlier, I thought I was being bold, I wrote in my journal, and daring and ready to go. You know what I mean? Then the Lord says, we will get to that. <laughs> we'll get some of that. Just like a good dad. You ever, when you're raising your kids, yeah, yeah, it's okay. We're going to get there, right? We're, we're on the journey. We're get, you're getting there. You're doing some. And then like a big, he goes, but first love. First love better. Be kinder. Ah. Lord, I'm a nice guy. No, I knew what he meant. <laughs> and he wasn't reprimanding. He was just saying that. Love well and be kinder. He says, keep the, f the first thing, the first thing. And then all of these other things will find their place. On that note, then the Lord says, Read to the people 1 Corinthians 13. I'm like, Lord, everybody knows 1 Corinthians 13. I need to do some eschatology stuff. I need to like, I need to get in deeper. We need the people built up in the Word. You know, some of you feel like, you know, you read a lot of New Testament, but you don't do Old Testament. I'm like, well, I believe the whole thing. You can go to my Read the Bible in a Year and hear me read the whole Bible if you want that. And we'll get to some of that. And that was some of the stuff I was telling the Lord. I want, we want the people being grounded in the Word. And the, but the Lord says, well, start here. So here we are mid-January while we're deeply fasting and praying. You can turn to 1 Corinthians 13 in your favorite translation. But Carl's going to read from the NLT, the New Living Translation. Pardon me while I clear my head a bit. What? We're out of Kleenex. That can't be. I should just keep a box up here. What am I thinking, you know? I usually do. Talk amongst yourselves. This is classic. In fact, 1 Corinthians 13, or 1 Corinthians, is mega, right? And 13 is well known. I had a special note about this I wanted to read before I get into it. Check this out. <coughs> 1 Corinthians 13 is one of the most popular and most famous scriptures, right? Everybody knows it. Paul's discussion of love is not really sappy or sentimental, and I think most of you recognize that. Love in this chapter is the Greek word agape. We've all heard that. Other Greek words that could be translated love include philia, a fondness or appreciation found in friendships, or eros, eros, a passionate, intense desire. In ancient Greek thought, though, agape does not exclude all that. So agape is everything. Yes, it's brotherly love, and it's interesting because a lot of times churches or preachers want to separate. Well, let's just be brother. But there is a place where agape love will carry over into your intimate relationships. Husbands and wives need to be agape slape. Yeah. Yes. Keep stirring all that stuff up, and I won't, I won't expound more for all you single people. <coughs> And indeed, agape draws on elements. Don't help me out back there. Y'all be careful. It draws on elements of both. 
perfect kind of love has fondness transcending of any particular kind and a passion without the necessity of receiving back. Ooh, that's agape, loving people when it doesn't come back to you. Although Paul, <coughs> sorry, although Paul is not writing Greek philosophy, it's still a good summary of the concept of agape in all the New Testament, and especially where Paul is sharing here. Chapter 13 is the pinnacle of Paul's plea against the divisions in the Corinthian church. I would say, well, this can be a focus for most of the body because the enemy loves to come in and divide the body. That's why you see so much YouTube stuff or amongst churches like, well, we believe this and you don't believe that and you're not doing it right and we don't, and you know, you, you know how that goes. I think we have to be careful. While we're wanting to get things right, we still have to walk in this kind of love. Absolutely. So, um, okay, enough of that. I'm not going to unpack more of, of the details. Let's, the Lord says, let's read it because I wrote it. So funny. I like doing word studies and doing all that and watch apologetics and get all this figured out. And then the Lord's like, could you just read it and I'll show you. When people say, well, why? Because the word of God is inspired by God. It's written by the Holy Spirit. We fully believe that the whole counsel of the word is God's voice to us. Through all of time. Isn't that awesome? There's no other book like it. I mean, I've tried to read other things, Bhagavad Gita and Buddhist writings and, you know, the Koran and things. I'm just like, it doesn't have it. I'm not, I'm not hating. I'm just saying there's not the Holy Spirit. Now, it, it grabs elements of it because God's trying to speak to all of mankind. But anyway, there's nothing like this, so the Lord's saying read. So love's the greatest thing. 1 Corinthians 13 Absor absorb this, not just in your head, but let your spirit open wider as you listen. So if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Verse 2, if I had the gift of prophecy. Yes, Lord, I want that. And if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge. I mean, he's kind of took the whole paintbrush right there. Everything, cosmic stuff, the whole deal. And if I had such faith that I could move mountains, there you go. I want to do that too, Lord. <clears throat> but I don't love others. I'm nothing. Ooh. If I gave everything I have to the poor, oh, we got to take care of the poor, the widow, the orphan. Yes, we do. And sacrifice your body. Oh, I could boast. I could be a martyr. I'll go to some country and I'll try to preach and they can take my body. But if I don't love others, I would have gained nothing. Now, I'll insert here, love was dealing with the Corinthians being kind of very, it was a very prosperous society. They were very philosophical. They had a lot of ideas. The church was dividing over, you know, all kinds of things. Like they wanted to be special. They were getting kind of full of themselves. That's why Paul got to chapter 13. Because they weren't loving each other. They were getting more divisive because everybody wanted to be special. Take note. We're all special. Right. Verse 4. So love is patient and kind, Carl. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Ah, ouch, ouch. Every time you hear that, you go like, yeah, Lord, that's the big one. That's the big ticket item here. It does not demand its own way. How about that one? I want it my, this is how it's got to go. My life has to be this way. I want Leanne to do this, or I want this to happen in my life, or I want the church to do this, and I'm going to demand Carl's way. No, that's not how it is. The higher you want to get, the lower you got to go. Ah, yes, Lord, <coughs> not demanding our own way. It's not irritable. Let go of your irritations. Oh, man, that really ticks me off. Oh, I know none of you guys ever do this. Like, so, so I'm just preaching to the mirror here. It's just Carl. Like, oh, why does that get me? This person, that person, or a thing, or somebody on the job, or somebody in here, you know, just things you, it triggers you, or, or on the news, ah, right? Oh, man, watch news. That'll stir up some of that one. 
and it keeps no record of being wronged. Oh, let me say that again, right? Not irritable, and it keeps no records, not like, well, I need a few days. No, no records of wrong. Well, maybe another year. I'll get some more counseling. Well, if you just let it go, you won't need more counseling. Now, I believe in good counseling, and we have the spirit of counsel in the house. In fact, Nancy does counseling here a couple days a week. Some of you get help. She does a great job, and so we believe in it. But if you find yourself keep coming back, oh, okay, I'm in process, Lord. The Lord says, we'll get done with that. Keep no record. It should get to where almost like, you know, I don't really remember what got me so bent. Or this horrible event in my life just somehow doesn't get me anymore. I pray that we can all like evaluate looking back in your life and go like, hmm, it has no attachment to me. So that's why I'm slowing down here on purpose because we read this at weddings and different things. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, the love boat, the love chapter. Sure, this sounds awesome. And we turn it into songs, but then we're not living it. Most of the time, <clears throat> it reads awesome. It lives really tough. Get that? Oh, man, poetry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. God doesn't want us just to read it. What does he say? Don't be hearers of the word only, but doers of the word. And this is a time as we're stepping, I'm, I'm reading it today because I thought I was going to get into something more eschatology and, oh, I'm going to show you guys I can really teach some stuff. <laughs> I can if we were supposed to. And the Lord says, just go back to the love chapter. I'm like, oh, come on, God. Everybody can repeat this. He says, no, but they're not doing it. Even at the well, here you are, transition here. The Lord says, my divine reset is to help my giants come up into a place so big, they're going to be, you guys are syrupy, man. You love us. We, you love each other. How do you do that? And nothing, there's no Klingons in the house of the well of Nashville. Just you guys are free. And then you love people. You're loving your families. You're loving your enemies. What? You, I don't hear you speak bad about anybody. How do you do that? I'm like, only Jesus, my friend. <laughs> only Jesus. Wow. Okay, so you don't keep record of wrongs. I know I'm going slow, but this is the chewing on it. This right now is the best prime rib you've ever had. Mm. It does not rejoice about injustices, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Doesn't mean that we don't look for justice, right? But you get where, where we're supposed to live, right? Love never gives up. Oh. Never loses faith. I just, yeah, okay. Is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Oh, but you don't know how hard this has been. I don't care. Well, no, no, that's not good. I care. I totally get it. I do. Life is hard. Yeah, it's having compassion. That's right. That, that place where like, you know what? I'm just freer. I want you to get freer. As we're in the divine reset, we're fasting and praying. I want it to feel like we come at the end of the month and we're not going like, wow, that was tough. No, I want to be like, man, I'm charged. Something happened. Jesus is bigger in me and things are gone. I'm healed. I'm, I'm saved. I'm healed now, but I'm delivered. And things just went off and nobody prayed. The Holy Spirit got me, yeah. right? Yes, Lord. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. Oh, verse 8 again. And in a church that's mystical, I mean, we're going hard and fast after the deeper stuff. We're having dreams and visions and journeys in the heavens. And people say, can you do that? I'm like, whatever Jesus wants to do, we go there. We want to prophesy. We're speaking to we speak in tongues all the time. We're finding special knowledge. Well, no, no, we got to just stay in the Word. Well, the Holy Spirit's going to reveal knowledge way beyond the Word. It's not going to violate the Word. But your encounters with the Lord are going to give you understanding and knowledge that necessarily wasn't here. Okay, I won't unpack that. But the point is, as you all know, verse 8, prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will 
it becomes all useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only a part of the whole picture. Verse 10, but when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Now, I believe that's implying the end of time, because nothing's perfect here. Although, okay, I won't unpack all that. Because people would say, well, I'll be good at it when I die. I'll get there when I'm in heaven. Don't use verse 10 as a cop out, right? Don't go, well, good, because when I, when I die, I'll get all that fixed, and in heaven it'll be perfect. No, the Lord's calling us up higher and higher, deeper and deeper, FaceTime, so you're like, wow, I'm different today than I was yesterday, or this week, and like, wow, I am totally being transformed. The old man is dead. Verse 11, so when I was a child, I spoke and thought like a little child, and I reasoned like a child, but when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we, so quit kidding around. No, don't be childish. Sometimes people do silly things and like, that's so childish and immature. Me too. And I'm thinking, I'm acting like a little rat here. I got to put it aside. You have to go like, no, I rebuke that thing. That's not my Jesus life. The old man is dead. Ding dong. The man is dead. He's <laughs> The wicked man is dead. Yes, because we have Jesus. So no more childishness. Verse 12, now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. Sure, there's going to come a time where we won't have to grapple with it here. So that's our big hope. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely just as God now knows me completely. Woo, that's going to be fun, but don't get in a hurry to go. Stay here. We need your help. Three things will last forever. What are they, church? Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Okay, hang on for the ride. I'm going to read faster through 14. I thought, Lord, that's it. 13 is going to do it. The Lord said, no, give him 14 too. But why? Check it out. 1 Corinthians 14. Let love then be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the, <laughs> the Spirit gives. What? So we just got lectured on love, but Paul immediately goes like, okay, that we got that now, right? And Jesus is saying to us, I want you to love better this year than you've ever loved before. But then Paul goes on, but you can desire all this other stuff. That's why Jesus, when he was talking to me in this hidden place, is like, we're, we're getting there. You're going to get some of that. And it all comes. It's like he wasn't withholding anything. He was reminding me of this, especially the ability to prophesy. I'm like, what? For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you'll be talking only to God since people won't understand you. You'll be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. But one who prophesies strengthens others. Here it is. If you're wondering, well, what should prophecy do? Predict doom and gloom? No. What is prophecy supposed to do? Verse 3. Take big red mark. But one who prophesies should be, they strengthen others, you encourage them, and you comfort them. What does it do, church? It strengthens, encourages, what? And comforts. Oh, that's cool. I want to prophesy all the time like that. Verse 4. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. Ooh. So that song that hit this morning was kind of a prophetic song in a way. I didn't have that in my, I didn't, all I said was like, man, this is going to be a good morning, Lord. I always say that on Sunday morning. And before I could get the song out, the Lord says, just start. That was prophetic, right? I think it was. I'll have to go back and watch it. I have no idea what I released. It always comes across like it, I see it coming, ticker tape. People say, how do you do that? Like, right, Leanne? It's just like you start getting a download, and you just go, and you trust. And it doesn't, for me, it doesn't always come out pretty, but I get there. Okay. 
Um, so it strengthens the entire church. So remember those, strengthening, encouraging, and comforting. And your tongues are good. Now, he does say if somebody can interpret, it's great. So I wish you could all speak in tongues. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to do a, uh, does everybody in here speak in tongues? You can raise your hand if you want. If you don't, no guilt or shame. You want it? The Lord gives it. Come up to the prayer team. like, I, want, I got the Holy Spirit, but I never prayed in tongues. And if it doesn't come today, keep asking the Lord. He gives it. He wants you to have it. Because Paul said, I wish, I wish, Carl wishes you would all speak in tongues. Something happens when you're speaking in the spirit language. Your spirit is right in tune with the Holy Spirit. You can't get better prayers than that one. Yeah. But even more, I wish you could all prophesy. And for prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues, unless someone interprets what you're saying so that the whole church will be strengthened. I'll say this, when words come like that in this house or somebody brings a public, you know, a tongue, I'm always listening, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? I'm asking the Holy Spirit for an interpretation because it shouldn't come without somebody revealing what they got. And sometimes I pray in tongues and then I can speak. The Lord tells me what I said. Anybody get it like that? I'm like, ooh, I prayed in tongues, but I think it said this. And so there should be that element. Wow, cool. Thank you, Lord. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, I'm about done. Hang in there. Six, verse six. Dear brothers and sisters, if I should come to you speaking in an unknown language, how would that help you? But if I bring you a revelation or of some special knowledge or prophecy or teaching, that's helpful. Even lifeless instruments like the flute or the drums or the harp must play the notes clearly or no one will recognize the melody, and we do. We try to bring things clearly here. And if the bugler doesn't sound a clear call, how will the soldiers know they're being called to battle? Okay, moving on. Verse 9, it's the same for you. If you speak to people in words they don't understand, how will they know what you're saying? You might as well be talking into the wall or empty space. Now, I don't mind you if you're going to pray for each other and you, you start by praying in tongues, but ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm feeling I'm praying like this. What, what could this mean? I always try to give the, the interpretation. There are many different languages in the world, and every language has meaning. But if I don't understand this, the, your language, I'll be a foreigner to someone who speaks it. And the one who speaks it will be a foreigner to me. And the same is true for you. So since you are so eager to have the special abilities the Spirit gives, seek those that will strengthen the whole church. So anyone who speaks in tongues should pray also for the ability to interpret what they've said. I just said that, right? For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying yet. Well, then what shall I do? Well, I'll pray in the spirit and I will also pray with understanding. I will sing in the spirit and I will also sing words I understand. For if you praise God only in the spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? How can they join you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you're saying? You'll be giving thanks very well, but it won't strengthen the people. I got to insert here, that's why we don't just do like all spontaneous things all the time here at the well. And I like that kind of thing. I like just do soaking night on occasion or different, different ones of you have soaking things in your homes. Do that all the time. Do that, but it can't always just be that. The written psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs have a, have a usefulness to the Lord, and they're all important. Whew. Okay, where am I going? Um, but you'll be giving things. Okay. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. Well, now Paul's just like blowing the roof off, right? Right? It's interesting. He, doesn't it always feel like Paul's like, well, wait a minute. You said prophesy. Then now he's saying, well, I pray more than all the rest of you. But in a church meeting, I'd still rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in tongues. Brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding matters of this kind. It is written in the Word in Scripture. This is a quote from Isaiah 28. I will speak to my own people through strange languages and through the lips of foreigners, but even then they would not listen to me, says the Lord. That's a special thing for all of us, really. So you see that speaking in tongues is a sign not for believers. Now, I'm going to stop there 
because there's some, I'm not going to teach all this. Well, then we shouldn't do tongues in church. Yes, we can. And Paul goes deeper into that. He also gets into like uh, summarizing things. And even down in 14, he gets into like a certain order in worship. I think that was a model, not a law. I'll just say that. Come people, well, we've already had a tongue or we've had two. And Paul said, stop with one or two. Oh, wait, maybe two or three. Oh, we went to four. Ah, we've, we've sinned against God. No, 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 no. He was giving a, a, you get it, a model, a form. Okay, this is how it can work. So he was looking for order, but not making it legalistic. And then he gets into verse 34 down there where he says, women should be silent in the church. I, I can't tell you how much dispute. I was studying this chapter scholars debating this. I'm like, oh, weary. Do you ever do Bible study? It's just wearisome. You're like, Lord. Well, they find that, okay, I'll say this. Paul didn't even write that part of chapter 14. They found it in an old manuscript, like somebody wrote it in the margins. Some other dude didn't like women preaching in the church, so he just kind of wrote it. So it wasn't even in Paul's original text. Okay, so you're going... So that's why women can speak in this church. You can teach, you can preach, you can pray, you can prophesy, you can sing. Leanne is a pastor. I know that rattles some people, and you'll just have to get over it. So, okay. But I'm not, I love you anyway, and I'm not offended if you don't agree with me. That's how I feel about it. I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine, you know. To me, it's just like the bodies to be built up. Men, women, children, every tribe, tongue, every nationality. Like I look for the youth to have one. Pay attention when the youth are speaking to me. Younger people and the elders, when the elders speak. I'm like, yeah, how did that work? I'm always listening by the Spirit. So uh, we get stuck on cultural things and, uh, and all that. Anyway, that's not... I want to remain in this thing of like the gifts or what. We're going to have all this mystical, cosmic, supercalifragilistic, expialidocious kind of life in the spirit, right? You can have it all, huh? But we give it all to the Lord and do with it as he wants us to navigate. We don't worship the stuff, right? We worship the Lord who gives the stuff. I know that's just kind of raw language, right? The gifts of the spirit, all the things of the spirit, all the things of the spirit realm. But the blanket the Lord's having us step in because of the divine reset is like, don't forget to love people and be compassionate and kind. And one thing the Lord said, it's going to get messier. I'm like, oh, really, Lord? Oh, no, no, no. And Jerry, he he had to go to another meeting. So he didn't, it wasn't that he didn't like what I was saying. He had to to get, he even came up and says, look, I'm going to leave while you speak. Don't be worried about that. I don't, uh, you know. He says, you know, what was, where was I going with Jerry talking about? Yeah, uh, messiness is part of church life. And you just got to go, okay, Lord, whatever. You know, it's going to get messy. I just bless it. I bless all the messy people, you know. <laughs> and I'm one of them. I'm, a, I'm a, any messy people in the house. I got some messy stuff that God's still hashing out. But I'm bigger than I was last year in the spirit. But I feel lower because this big stuff is like too much. That's what that was about, hiding in the Lord. We got to hide in the Lord to do spiritual, mystical things because the enemies are going to be all about, they're going to try to catch you in it and then hurt you, but you're still covered in the Lord, so they really can't. We don't believe in bigger, bigger levels, bigger devils. No, we don't. The devil's always mad at you. He doesn't like you already, so you might as well get as big as you can in the spirit and go like, Yeah, bring it on. No, I don't go pick in the fight. I say, lower that thing of, you want to get higher in the Lord? Hide, hide, hide in the Lord. That's how we're going to get bigger. And this time of prayer and fasting and this divine reset is going to take you guys into some pretty far out places. We're praying that you're having dreams and visions and the Lord's coming to intersect your life and go like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was praying and I did this and I did this. And yet you're seeking love, kindness, unity, peacefulness, unoffendable. You're going to find like, you know what? Things don't, why doesn't, nothing bothers me anymore. Woohoo! Yeah. That is bigger. 
Because if we get all this cosmic, hyper-spiritual stuff, and you're grumpy, and you don't, and you hate people, and you're not nice, and you're doing all that, if, if the, the, the earthly stuff, like how we relate to each other is failing, I'll come and get you. <laughs> no, I release the Lord to convict you. But I also release you as giants of the house to kind of say, hey, man, what's going on? How's your life? <laughs> what's going on? Or be quick. If there are disputes, quickly resolve it. Say, hey, you know what? Even if you can't agree on something, just say, you know what? We love each other in the Lord, and we're just going to let it go. But a lot of times, the enemy just throws a wrench in things just to get us messed up. So it's not either or. It's not going to be because much of the church, you know, they abandon spiritual things because they're like, well, the important thing is this, right? No, the Lord still wants the well to be the full buffet kind of community, all of the above. And then what he unpacks here, we're listening for all the time. So there you go. Love well. And then look what else the Lord will do. Two things. Like we're going to love like nobody else has loved and then we're going to be doing all the spiritual things, you know. And I believe it's on us. I think that's the divine reset. So, Lord, I bless the house with this divine reset. Lord, I bless the folks here and everybody hearing across the world with a divine download of divine love. Lord, that as we're moving face-to-face, this FaceTime place with you, Lord, you're, you, you're just making us so much more like you that we become less and less. Like your apostle said, you must in, I have to decrease, Lord, so you can increase. And Lord, that's what we want, so that we stay hidden in you, that we're hidden in you because we're protected in you, and then we're walking just as you've written in our books to walk. Jesus, we give you all the glory and honor and praise for it in your mighty name. And all God's people said, amen, so be it. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hey, John, you want to, we are going to receive an offering, and so, John, you can come on up and do that. Uh, get out your checkbooks, and you spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. No. Be generous as the Lord makes you happy to be generous, and thank you online. John's going to give you all the details. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Brother Carl. So, I've got a half an hour, right? Is that yeah. fantastic? No, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, where do I want to start? Let's see. Well, when I was six, um, no, never mind. No, just kidding. I know y'all want to go. Okay, so, um, Lord, uh, we, we thank you for this time because this is a time for worshiping and our giving, right? Um, something that's been sticking with me that Carl said, we must decrease so that he must increase. And one of the things that um, you guys have probably heard this too for this year, there's a lot of... Um, words being spoken about doors being open this year for, for a lot of things, you know, whether it's um, prophetic things the Lord's doing, um, things in our, in our lives, whether financial health or opportunities work, whatever, you know, and we all have needs, you know, um, those of y'all that are watching online, you know, you've got um, needs, there's folks that are looking for work and people that are having financial issues and all of that, and one of the things with that ties in with the um, decreasing so that the Lord will increase is also thankfulness. And this is one of the things the Lord has shown me through really difficult times is when we give him thanks, it opens up portals for blessing. But see, that's also connected to doors for, for, for these things to be opened up in our lives. So not only do we need to decrease, we need to have a, a heart of thankfulness, even in small things. You know, if you don't see much or you don't feel like there's much to be thankful for in your life, look at the little things. And when you start thanking the Lord for those little things, you're going to see tremendous change with things. So, um, Paul and Donnie, y'all, y'all, oh, it's not Paul, sorry. You're not Paul. C- come forth, Don. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Good to see you. Welcome. You're nice. Okay. Come on up front. So, Lord, uh, we thank you um, for uh, the spirit of giving. Father, and as we give today, you all already know the, the way, way we give, but I'll share this real quick. Um, we have text, so you can read that up there. Um, you can also make checks payable to the Well of Nashville slash ACT. Um, those of you all online that are watching, thewellinashville.com slash support. 
right? And for those of y'all that are giving cash today, please raise your hands. We've got envelopes we can give you. Just write your name clearly on those envelopes. No one? Okay, awesome. That's all right. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for the blessings. Lord, we thank you for the new year. Lord, it's a physical change. Um, you know, it's a new calendar. But in the spirit, it's also new changes as well. So, Lord, we look forward to that. Um, we thank you, Lord, for how you've blessed us. As we look back, you know, you're just... <laughs> He's so good. So, Lord, give us the spirit of thankfulness. And may we give back, Lord, just a small little part. And, and it doesn't always have to be financial. You know, we come up and we talk and it's like, okay, I got to give my 10%. But the Lord wants our hearts. Are we giving everything? It's not 10%. It's our lives. We give financially, but we also give in service. What's, you know, where is the Lord calling you in other areas too? So, Lord, show us those areas in our lives you know, as we give today, bless those, multiply those gifts, Lord, but also show us those areas in our lives that we need to give to, to, to be of service to you, Lord, in whatever areas those are. With relationships, Lord, it could be ministry, maybe not, but Lord just wants our heart and wants to lead us in those paths because he loves us so much, and he wants to give you peace. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you provision. So, Lord, we thank you Father, and just bless those that are, that are giving, Lord. Open the doors. May this be an opportunity, Lord, for all of us this year for those doors to open, Lord, in your precious holy name. And we thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, John. Oh, yeah. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. That's who we are, declaring the goodness of God into the earth. There'll be more news. Hey, we're going to dismiss here in a second. Just remember, there's no extra meetings this month. Uh, what February will look like, I have no idea at this point. Sunday mornings will stay intact. The Lord did tell us that. But no home meetings, no... I mean, you can meet in your homes and do whatever the Lord tells you to do, but the Lord said, want people to pull back into Him, praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. So be engaging that. Uh, even though men and women's meeting that we do and all of that, that's on hold till February if the Lord brings it back. We're, we're so open to that. We, we're using this term of everything's up on the table, drawing board, like the war room. Are we going here? Are we doing this? Does that work anymore? We don't worship activity. You know, getting busier doesn't make us holier. <clears throat> Obedience. <laughs> it wears you out. But, you know, if we're doing what God wants, and we do want, you know, there'll be stuff. So just be praying with us. That's the other part. So we'll keep you posted, but this month is still engaged. And if you're getting dreams and visions and you feel like the Lord says, I should tell Carl and Leanne, send us an email and let us know what you hear the Lord saying. You know, if you have our email, if not, it's the well of Nashville at yahoo.com. The well of Nashville at yahoo.com. If you have prayer requests, it goes to wellprayernetwork at gmail.com. Well prayer network at gmail.com and yes we're still praying and the prayer team's awesome they're a fiery bunch of giant giants they get things done whoop whoop thank you all for staying engaged uh the prayer team will be up here afterwards when we dismiss so if you want more prayer you want to get filled with the spirit ask them to pray for you to get the gift of tongues and uh see what god does don't be afraid let me just say don't be afraid papa's good the Lord is good. He gave us the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit to empower us to walk this earthly journey with the tools that he gave us so we could navigate it in power. And yeah, and it's for that reason alone. So it will encourage your spirit. All right, be blessed. Love y'all. We'll see you next Sunday. 
Just stay tuned to all the social media stuff just for updates and all that. Enjoy fellowship, and the prayer team can come on up. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.